is just have a quick understanding and overview of Rack, Oracle Real Application Clusters, uh, as well as Oracle Rack OneNode. Oracle Rack OneNode is a little bit different from Rack, proper Rack, but uh, leverages the same infrastructure. So uh, as we can see here by this very simplistic architecture, what we have when we actually set up Oracle Rack is we have a cluster. Cluster is comprised of one or more, uh, let's just say two or more, uh, nodes or servers, uh, physical servers, and then we have shared storage underneath. So if we look from the bottom up, we have shared storage, usually managed by ASM. Uh, these devices can be uh, file-based uh, protocols like NFS, things like that, or they can be block-based protocols like Fiber Channel and stuff like that. So we have that shared storage that's pr presented up to both nodes with inside of the cluster. ASM manages that for us. Uh, ASM is a really good uh, volume manager for the database. Uh, then on top of that, we have our OS, and then we have Oracle Clusterware. We have the ASM instance that runs, and then we have the database instance that is designated here on node 1 as instance 1. If you look over here on node N, which is node 2, 3, etc., uh, that'll be instance N, instance 2, 3, what have you. Uh, de that would be its designation. Then on top of that, you have your listener and the services and the VIPs and things like that in the public network. So you'll have your public network and your private network, which is your cluster interconnect where all the traffic goes through. Uh, for Oracle Rack, for real application clusters, um, all nodes with inside of the cluster, so all servers with inside of the clusters, and excuse me, I use the terms node and servers interchangeably, all servers with inside of the cluster are actively hosting an instance of, an or of the Oracle database, right? So really quick, Oracle 101 stuff, a database is just data files on disk, that's what's down here in the shared storage. An instance is not a database. An instance is just the SGA, PGA, the segment of memory that users connect up to to go ahead and access the shared storage, right? So in a rack environment, we have instance one, instance two, instance three, what, what have you, uh, that are all accessing live the shared storage. And then we have a distributed lock manager that handles uh, lock ownership and stuff like that and, and, and device ownership and all this other stuff for us right so with rack one node it's a little bit different with rack one node um, we'll still have uh, many nodes with inside of the cluster so two or more nodes with inside of the cluster and then we'll have on one of those particular nodes it'll be just hosting a rack one node database that's a specific database that's a single instance database so a single instance database so one instance running on one server, on one server's memory, talking to shared storage down in our ASM shared storage environment. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. So what I have here is I have uh, two virtual machines running. Uh, rack 1 is the first node in the cluster, and then Rack 2 is the second node in the cluster. Uh, if we take a look at all the PMON process that's running on Rack 1, you'll notice that for the PMON process, I have ASM 1, which is the ASM instance, and then I have Rack 1, which is the database instance. If we take a look over here at uh, Rack 2, the second node in the cluster, and we run the exact same script, you'll see that I have my ASM instance on the second node, I have the Rack instance on the second node, and then I have this new guy over here called Rack 1 node. So the Rack 1 node is that specific Rack 1 node instance that's accessing uh, the database for me on my behalf. So this is the this is the instance that is being managed. All these all this stuff is being managed by Oracle Clusterware services. Um, but this is the one that Clusterware protects that says, okay, well you at least have to run on one node with inside of the cluster. So let's just take a look at the SQL plus at SQL plus to see exactly what uh, the query would actually look like if we actually see uh, from the database dictionary view what this stuff would look like. So if we do a select host name if I could just type correctly, instance name from GV instance. That'll show us that for the rack one node database, it is being hosted on host uh, rack two, and the instance name is rack one node underscore two. Let's take a look at how that differs from a proper rack database. So if I go ahead and log into my rack database, and I do the exact same query. So I'm going to do the exact same query, the select host name, etc., uh, from GV uh, dollar sign instance. GV is global is a global view. So if you're running in a cluster, um, uh, you might be familiar with the the, the V dollar sign views, um, but the GV dollar sign views are global views within inside the cluster. So select uh, 
host name instance name from gv instance and boom and so what you'll see here upset lines 200 uh, what you'll see here is for the rack database the real the proper rack database you'll notice that the rack instances are being hosted on all nodes with inside of the cluster right so that's the difference it's an active 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 database uh, or instances being distributed amongst all the nodes in the cluster whereas rack node one leverages the cluster infrastructure and just runs in like almost as runs in a singleton node so the question could come up, uh, well, what happens if node 2 fails? Uh, how does this guy, the, the singleton database, the rack one node database, migrate over to the secondary or to the primary to the primary server? Well, let's go ahead and just take a look at that. So if I just do a sudo reboot, and essentially this is mimicking a critical failure. So the system's going down, it's going down pretty hard. So what's actually going to happen now is if we take a look back at uh, our diagram, if I can pull that guy back up, whatever. Take a look back at our diagram. What's going to happen here in the meantime is we were running on rack two, the rack one node database. Well, this guy just crashed. So what's actually going to happen is the clusterware that's running on node one is going to say, oh no, uh, that system should still be online somewhere with inside of all my resources. Uh, it'll wake up, it'll go ahead and read the redo logs, play the redo logs uh, forward, uh, roll, roll transactions forward, roll transactions back based upon where they were in their commit status, and then bring the instance online. So you'll experience a little bit of a, of a brownout, uh, but you can actually set up transparent application failover and stuff like that to go ahead and do do all that stuff for you. It's taking a while to reboot, so I'm just gonna be mean about it and tell the VM just to power off, right? So now, if I do a check status, you'll notice that I still have all that stuff up and running. I have my rack one database, uh, or excuse me, my rack database still up and running, or my rack instance still up and running, my ASM instance still up and running. Uh, what you'll see here is hopefully it'll start to fail over here in a little bit. So let me go ahead and just try to loop through um, this script. So for i equals 0, uh, i less than 100, uh, increment it, do uh, echo number 5, if I could type correctly. Number zero. Oh, I should have put a sleep in there. So let's sleep this guy for a second. Sleep for five seconds. Let's see that. Right. So run number zero. Oh, and so what you'll notice right here is that the rack uh, one node database has failed over to the server that's still alive with inside of my cluster. So I'm still SQL plus into the rack database. Let me go ahead and log back into via SQL plus into the rack one node database. Right, so rack one node. Let's see if the thing's recovered yet. And it does take it does so since it is a failover, uh, it does take take some time. So now if we do these uh, set lines 200 and select host. There you go. It's now showing us that our database has successfully failed over. I think I didn't even time it how fast it failed over. Uh, once the system crashed, we just it pretty much uh, is pretty quick. Um, but now we're able to select count from that test test. 
So now we're able to go ahead and the database is fully open. So all the crash recovery and all that other stuff is uh, taking care of us for, for uh, via the clusterware. So uh, I hope this helps you understand a little bit the differences between or understand what the what Rack is and what Rack OneNote is. If there's questions or anything like that, feel free to post in the comments. Uh, I'll shoot my corporate email address uh, up here as well. It's Matthew, M-A-T-T. H-E-W.DeMarco, at Oracle.com. If you have questions, stuff like that, feel free to let me know. I've been doing this stuff for quite a long time. Uh, and with that, thanks for watching and taking time of your day to, uh, to indulge me on my, uh, my little quest to educate. Thanks.